Hi, my name is Rich Bowen. I work for Red Hat in the Community Management Office. At the recent OpenStack Project Teams Gathering in Denver, I did a series of interviews with the various project teams that work on the OpenStack software. Most of these interviews were about the software itself and what's in the latest release and what's coming in future releases. But in one of these interviews, in particular the interview with the Swift team, we got on a bit of a tangent about how they resolve priority conflicts across companies, how they collaborate across time zones and languages, and how they manage who works on what on the project. So I pulled out that part of the interview to publish separately here. You can watch the rest of the Swift interview at the URL that I'll be posting down in the description below. But I thought that this part of the interview was particularly valuable because OpenStack is such an enormous open source project spanning multiple companies, multiple time zones, multiple customer priorities. One of the themes that I've been, been interested in this year is, is how people collaborate across companies. How does that work for you guys? How do you, how do you work effectively together when you're not in the same time zone, in the yes, same that's country? Good one. <laughs> so, uh, for me and Kota, it's easy. We are actually in the same time zone, but unlike uh, a lot of the other develop core developers, they are either Europe or in uh, the US. And so it is very interesting to be able to work. Um, one great thing we've noticed in a lot of um, uh, Swift deliverables that we've been, uh, we've been working on in this cycle and previous cycles is the sun never sleeps when, you, uh, when you're working on Swift. Because as soon as I go to bed, uh, someone in Europe wakes up and can continue reviewing or you know, hacking. So that's, that's kind of cool. And the end of their day is when I wake up and can pass that along. Some of the logistics have been interesting. Uh, we, we've tried a lot of different things to figure out how to effectively communicate and how to effectively find uh, work, work items and make sure we're not duplicating efforts and making sure that we're getting stuff done. Uh, we've tried everything from using uh, the off-the-shelf tools like Trello, in addition to the you know, Garrett and the wikis that we have. Uh, we've used just straight up wiki pages that we update, updating, uh, making our own dashboards uh, to track different things. Uh, currently this week, we're or, and recently uh, doing some bug triage work. We've been just uh, working on out of an Etherpad. But for me, the important piece of the, uh, some of the really good things that have been helpful on allowing us to work together across continents and time zones and things like that have uh, been the regular in-person meetings we have, uh, the either semi-annual or quarterly meetings that we've had over the years with hackathons and, and summits and PTGs. Uh, and, but between those, we've still got to do a lot of work. And we have historically had uh, one meeting a week where we, uh, we say this is going to be the designated time. And it's extremely difficult to find a single time <laughs> that is good across all time zones because Unfortunately, there's some part of the world that's going to be a really terrible time, uh, no matter what time you pick. So uh, we had been working at one time zone that was good for most of our contributors and most of our uh, community. And that was going okay, but it turned out that it was really terrible, especially for India and China. And so we started a bi-weekly secondary meeting. Um, but it's secondary only in the fact that it's the second meeting, not as in a lesser meeting, and that's an important distinction. Uh, so what we do is we have, uh, especially in that meeting, we have rotating chairs to say, okay, who's gonna be uh, willing to take on the, the meeting agenda coordination? And they're generally fairly lightweight, but in my, in my opinion, they're the standing meetings, even if you hate meetings, even if you feel like there's nothing to talk about, the, important, the two important pieces for these meetings are, number one, there's a designated place where you can go and you can get information that's happening across what other people are working on and other things that you may have missed uh, because the mailing list has so much messages it's hard to keep track. Uh, and so if you missed something, somebody else probably got it. If somebody else missed something, you may have gotten it. And number two, it's a designated time where you know other people are going to be there and they can, you can bring up a question that you had and you said that 
normally it's very hard for me to wake up just in time to catch and get in the office to catch somebody in Europe before they go to bed, especially in Eastern Europe. Uh, but if we've got this meeting time, then they have set aside some time, just like I have, uh, just like Matt and Coda have, to say, this is when we're going to meet. And we can actually say, no, wait, we need to talk about this particular thing, answer some questions, and follow up via emails or, or IRC conversations later. Uh, so uh, those are some of the things that have been successful for us, the in-person meetings, uh, our, our weekly agenda meetings. Um, I, you know, I've, I've tried to focus on things like don't use American idioms. I, I hope or, I've not done too bad there. Or Australian <laughs> idioms. I find that sometimes when I'm in a meeting and I'll say something and no one knows what I'm talking about. And it's just because I'm using something that's either British or Australian. It turns out we're very similar and Americans have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> you learn these things. Those are language differences. How's that for you, Koto? Yeah, uh, the, uh, the trying to make the kind of meeting in the, our Canton is really good to uh, because uh, uh, sometimes uh, we uh, can have the uh, question from India or China. Mm -hmm. So uh, that to, uh, to work together all over the world, uh, that challenge is very good. That's why uh, sometimes the week, uh, first weekly meeting uh, is uh, at 6 a.m. for my time. <laughs> yeah. but Sometimes it's good because uh, it doesn't uh, uh, interrupt with other co workers. <laughs> so I can concentrate the uh, meeting. Do you find that there's ever a tension between corporate priorities, but what your manager's telling you to do as opposed to what the community's telling you to do, or does direction come primarily from the community? So there's, there's always going to be a tension over uh, corporate sponsors of an open source project, whereas the, the companies are deeply vested in investing in an open source project in order to turn a profit either directly or indirectly by that investment. Um, I've been fortunate enough that with my employer, there's not been a lot of, uh, since we're selling a storage system that is based around OpenStack Swift, it's, uh, the things that are good for the project are good for the company, and the things that are good for the company are largely good for the project. It's, uh, there, there's always gonna be some degree of tension there as far as um, what order do you prioritize things, you know, what, what are our employers telling us to work on uh, next as opposed to something else. Um, I have found that as a PTL on the project um, over the last seven years, that the important piece is not to dictate or to demand and say that this is what we must work on because that's just a fool's errand. It's not going to happen. It's much more. It's much more effective and responsible, I think, as far as open source leadership, to uh, instead listen to what these different uh, influencers, what these guys are working on, what everyone in the community is working on, and collate that, try to identify areas where there is opportunity for collaboration, and say, great, well, Matt and Coda are interested in the same things, perhaps they should know that they're actually interested in the same things and be encouraged to work together. And then secondarily, beyond that, uh, making sure that externally, you're able to broadcast that widely, such that I can say that this is fantastic because Coda's been working on supporting uh, global erasure codes uh, so that we can, uh, it's a great new feature that we've, we've been able to develop recently. Uh, so let's start talking about that externally. Matt already knew about that because he was sitting right next to him, you know, virtually in the community while we were working on that. But I can say that, uh, okay, so we've got the people who are working together um, and um, uh, identifying the places where uh, cooperation is very effective, whereas uh, sometimes it's like, well, this is going to be something that's really important, and here's something that's very important. Um, instead of everybody piling onto one thing, perhaps we can get a few more things done at once. Um, so and obviously every day is different as new people are coming in, and uh, you've got the, the one-off brand new contributors, you've got people who are long-time contributors uh, to other open source, open stack projects, um, and all of that kind of plays in. Um, so from my perspective as PTL, um, you know, figuring out where the barriers uh, 
can be removed such that there is effective communication amongst all of the contributors. Um, and then broadcasting that widely, listening and broadcasting rather than taking the other side and saying that, I have heard through all of these various means that this is what needs to happen, you guys should work on that. That's, that's not effective because you know, it's, uh, that's not how we work. A reason to make the uh, Wikipedia page mm -hmm. to, to show the, uh, what happened in the industry and right. the who are working on that. So we can cover it each other uh, yeah. to find, and even if it, uh, it worked uh, by another company, so we can just uh, know uh, the, uh, what and who, uh, and uh, we can cover it. Matt, can you go over like what we did for? Uh, there was the specs and there was the idea. How did that happen? <laughs> All the different ways we tried to contribute. Yes. <laughs> so, the rest of OpenStack, they do this idea of doing specs. Well, uh, all, I mean, it started with Blueprints, even. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, we used Launchpad, Launchpad to uh, track bugs, and we still do. That's awesome. Um, and there was this Blueprints, uh, being able to track, blue, uh, to track feature requests, really. Um, except they, they end up being way too stale. Like, no one will ever be able to get there and update, and it all change so much as different people representing different companies or different different use cases for for OpenStack uh, Swift. Um, so it was way too stale. I never got quite got updated yeah. properly. So uh, the idea in OpenStack land was specs. Yeah, which we loved. Which, which was great. Which we great. We, we, it out. We tried them a few different ways, um, except. Once they landed, no one really looked at them. Only, people only ever look at them when they're in... Uh, so the good thing about specs were there are, there's a spec file and it goes through Garrett. And because all code that we work on goes through Garrett, everyone can see them. And so that's really good. Um, specs, when you're editing them, when you're first uh, writing a spec, it would go through Garrett. So everyone could comment. Awesome. Much better than blueprints. Um, once it landed, however, it's not really in our faces anymore yeah. because we look at Garrett every day. Um, so you're supposed to go back and you're supposed to make changes. And anyway, it didn't, it didn't work happen. for us. It just didn't happen. It just didn't happen. We just, these things kind of stagnated. Or, if worse, because um, the specs jobs in uh, the CI would then go off and update a website so people could see what's going on in Swift or what's going on in Nova or whatever. And that's awesome. Except ours would never land because we found that it, was, it worked best when it was in Garrett. And so it was just this continual review and updates of patch sets, which means it's great if you knew where to look in Garrett, but this site never got updated when we were working. So we went and we tried lots of different ways. We tried to put in um, uh, kind of just some uh, kind of rules that we try to adhere to when we were using specs. We tried for, for cycles and it didn't work. So now it's kind of, a wiki page plus just whatever you need to give us the information. So the Make rule it is easy. now we have an ideas wiki page yeah. Yeah. Uh, that sort of mentioned, and it is if you have an idea, write it down someplace. I don't care where you write it down. Make a PowerPoint keynote and upload it someplace. Great, done. Uh, write a wiki page. Write a Etherpad. Don't care. Write it down. Link to it. That's it. If you've got an idea, there's a really really good chance you've actually thought kind of deeply about this, and somebody else may be interested in it but they haven't spent all the time you've been thinking about it, and it would be great if then they could see what you've been thinking through and stuff like this. So the idea with our wiki's page, and this is kind of goes back to the whole communication across continents and time zones and things like that, is if you've got an idea, write it down, link to it. That's it. And it's actually worked out really well now for the past about a year and a half or two years.